Amen. Actually, that is why we are serving the Lord. The wind roll is called up yonder. You will be there. Go before the Lord in prayer. Jesus name we pray a father we worship and bless your name this day we thank you because we have opportunity to make up our minds and our lives to be ready for the rapture at any moment when the roll calls up yonder, we shall be there. Thank you for the teaching of your world that you are bringing to us to make us spotless, make us perfect, make us clean and righteous altogether. We bless you and thank you. Be with us as we go forward. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are speaking on let brotherly love continue. Can we say it? Again. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, I read verse 1 to verse 4. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But homemongers and adulterers, God will judge. Late brotherly love. Continue. Why I trust this instruction is given is because of obstructions to brotherly love. Many things want to hinder brotherly love.
in your life many things appear to challenge brotherly love in the church many things show up to challenge pure Christian love in the hearts of the brethren one for another but the scripture is saying despite all such oppositions and challenges to love we should ensure as a church ensure as an individual that brotherly love continues now he mentions some works here which are acts of love if there is no love in the heart we will not be able to do this what is it entertaining strangers doing good to strangers yes if we do not overcome challenges we cannot do good to strangers because today strangers are suspected strangers are suspected why many carry evil about so when somebody comes I'm a stranger you are careful instead of thinking well towards a stranger you begin to suspect him it's not easy now to go to some villages and ask information on the roadside I was told of someone that went to Nsuka in the east and wanted to ask a school girl the way to somewhere. Immediately he stopped the car and said, Hey, the lady pick rest. who is saying hey they have come and the best thing is to escape actually that's the thing because of the challenges of our society but should not brotherly love apply anymore yes this is not just in the society in the church also sometimes because you don't know who is sitting by you some people move away from that seat I am afraid I don't know what they're doing now very seriously to give a gift to somebody to somebody's child is heavily suspected so that there is a resistance to it even to carry somebody's child in love ah actually these are challenges in the church of Christ but the Bible says let brotherly love continue make room for brotherly love however tough the environment is 
to eat food on visit to your brother's house to your sister's house is difficult even if it's the wife of the your pastor ah i don't know what is inside the food <laughs> i told the story of a man that the wife brought food for them to eat when the wife placed the food on the table he waited for the wife to sit down and uh, I trust they would have prayed uh, that's normal he waited for the wife to cut the food first then he cut his arm he waited for the wife to put his food in the soup to put her food in the soup the wife put the food in the soup and he was watching how will it reach the mouth swallow let me see then I know that the food is safe ah, it's as hot as this but not to eat in your brother's house not to eat in your sister's house shows fear is at work and the bible says there is no fear in love he that feared is not made perfect in love perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment then where brotherly love is not flowing there is torment people are being tormented because fear has torment then the message comes to us as a church pastor despite the challenge of time despite the work of the devil in the society and in the church even to the family make sure your church practices brotherly love otherwise the spirit of torment will take over the spirit of torture will take over then it comes to you as an individual Christian that brother you are a child of God you are born again you are living in a challenging society that devil wants to squeeze out righteousness by all means in various public ways private ways secret ways open ways to do it in the heart to do it in the face as a Christian make sure for your safety for your righteousness for obedience to God in all ways that you maintain brotherly love that's what you should know sister don't be so touchy emotional don't be so sensitive to the point brotherly love no more holes then Christianity has been punctured there is a puncture and the tire will be leaking it shall stop eventually after some distance after some days so it's a serious case late brotherly love 
continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained strangers unawares up to this time. Some strangers that come by you are messengers of God. If you develop an attitude to stay them off, not to accept them because of your self-protection, you will be staying off God's messengers. Messengers of goodness and mercy sent to your life. Strangers remain ways in which God governs the earth and shows kindness to men. Insects, flower, I mean the insects, help flowers to produce by pollination, carrying the seed from the male flower to the female flower and so on. Insects, God uses people to move from here and there and disseminating good. And they come in form of strange, some come in form of strangers. If we now make up our minds because of the challenges of time, because of some practical examples, because of personal opinions, because of family behavior, we will keep away from brotherly love. We will keep away from the works of God in the society, in human life, which is for their good. Yes. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them then we must be very sincere if our hearts always think the evil that happens to somebody is a repercussion it's God's judgment it's because he is a witch is because he is immoral or she is a witch she is immoral is because he is he has he has stolen if these are all our mind concerning the evils that come to people we will not comfort people we we'll rather say receive it a double portion is coming to you for your evil for your wickedness. God will do more. Ah. We'll be destroying something in the church. We'll be walking against God. Let brotherly love continue. Them who suffer adversity, being yourselves also in the body that you're suffering adversity, Visit them. Care for them. Remove evil thoughts from you. Otherwise, that thing you did against me, God is punishing you now. What if it is not? Satan has done many things against you. Have you watched God punishing Satan? Why do you think that God is the one punishing that person? Yes, God punishes and judges iniquity in his time. Remove that from your mind. Otherwise, it will affect brotherly love. Instead of going to visit that person, instead of giving a telephone call to sympathize with that person, your heart will be rejoicing and saying evil has happened is because that thought is affecting brotherly love that thought come when jesus came to the uh, 
bereft home of Lazarus. He was able to raise Lazarus up back to life. But why did he weep? Why did he weep? Brotherly love. Brotherly love. Yes. That person did the evil against you. But your heart of compassion. Hmm, your heart of compassion. Will be weeping. Will be crying. Because of him. Yes. Your heart of compassion will be crying. Although the person did evil. Although the person did evil. Yet your heart will be crying. Oh Lord. Look at it in the book of Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 18. We are talking about the death of Absalom. Now there was war between Absalom's people and David's people. Absalom, who was Absalom? Absalom was a child of a son of a son to David that wanted to take over the kingship of David. And to do this, he wanted to kill David. So he gathered people who made him king. He came to uh, Jerusalem with his entourage. David had to run away. Absalom became king, took over the kingship, and was planning war to kill David. So, the war was heavy between David's men and Absalom's men. When someone was running to give the king Report of the war in Second Kings chapter eighteen, verse thirty, verse uh, twenty-nine. You read from verse twenty-nine, and the king said, "Is the young man Absalom safe?" This is the young man that wanted to kill the father in serious war, and people were fighting along with him against David. His mind was on Absalom. Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimaaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, and me thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. And the king said unto him, Turn aside, and stand here. And he turned aside, and stood still. And behold, Cushai came, and Cushai said, Tidings, my lord the king. For the Lord hath avenged thee this day of all them that rose against thee. The Lord hath avenged thee this day of all those people that rose against thee. Yes. And what was the main concern of the king? Verse 32. And the king said unto Cushai, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushai answered, The enemies of my lord the king, all and all that rise against thee to do thee hard, be as that young man is. In his condition now is dead 
is dead. Everybody that is seeking your heart, let him be like Absalom. Let him die as Absalom has died. See the response of David. Everybody, I want you to read the response of David, verse 33. One, two, go. Can you see? And the king was much moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee? Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Ah. Uh? <laughs> verse 19 verse, I mean, chapter 19 verse 1 and it was told Joel behold the king weeped and mourned for Absalom what, is, what a shock is this somebody is after your life to kill you but God helped and delivered you from his hand and the man is dead now see what this man is doing over there Joab went angrily to the king in verse 2 Verse 2 says, And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people had said that day how the king was grieved for his son. Yes. Verse 5. And Joab came into the house to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life, and the lives of the sons of of thy sons and of thy daughters and the lives of thy wives and the wives of thy concubines in that thou lovest thine enemy and hatest thy friends for thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants for this day i perceive that if absalom had lived and all we had died this day then it had pleased thee well can you see a heart that does not have hatred for an enemy? No hatred. No wickedness. Although the person is your enemy, the person has done damage. Is still seeking after your heart. Your heart is peaceful. Your heart is peaceful. Not looking for his fall for his evil for his death then where is the heart here that said because this man is a witch i don't love him i mean say, this man is a wizard i don't love him i won't have any dealing with him i will eat his food this woman is a witch never where is that heart i can't greet her can't sit near me I can't go to her house if she is sick later but sick to herself. Where is that heart? A Christian heart. Which means whether somebody is a witch or a wizard, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't affect your heart. But do you know that he attempted to poison you? In fact, he poisoned you, only God delivered you. Your heart is clean. Your heart is righteous. See what he did to your daughter. See what he did to your, to your son. See what the man did. It's evil actually. A real evil. But your heart inside is peaceful. Peaceful with him. Hmm. <laughs> All these people who have done their consigned breeding business, if, any, if you've met with me and any one of them on the way, you will wonder whether I felt that this one did evil. 
There is no heart of heart for any one of them. Anyone to the worst of them. Nothing. The heart is not wounded. The heart is not angry. The heart is not grieved. The heart is not... It, oh God, judge them. Sometimes, of course the word of God says so, but it's even giving me problem to even pray like that. I don't hold to it tightly. Why? Hey, God. So, let your heart not be captured by the present society, by the evils of human beings. Otherwise, you will not know righteousness and holiness. You will not know it. You will be wise in your own eyes and will never live righteously. Let him that will be wise be a fool that he will be wise. See the case of David. Absalom was indeed an enemy, more than a witch, more than a wizard. Because not, not every witch is after you. But Absalom was after David. The worst a witch can do is to kill you. The worst a wizard can do is to kill you. But Absalom was to kill David. So what is the difference between him and a wizard? But the heart is peaceful. The heart is righteous. It's wishing good and not evil. Yes, in Proverbs. Chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24 the Bible tells us in verse 17 and 18 rejoice not when thine enemy falleth and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbled, lest the Lord see it, and it displeased him, and he turned away his wrath from him. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbled, lest the Lord see it and it displeased him and he turned away his wrath from him. You will read it now, everybody in that portion of scripture. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 17 and 18. One, two, go. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Here, God now, who is, is who says, Leave vengeance unto me, I will avenge, has gone now to deal with your enemy. He has cast him down. He is now torturing your enemy. And maybe your enemy is going, oh, he's crying, oh, it's terrible, it's too much. Then you are clapping her. God, continue. God, hey, hey. God said, you are doing that to me. <laughs> you are playing band for me to work for you. You are rejoicing. Clapping your hand for me. Kai. These people have taken me as a, a servant to them. Is it in my will to judge that person? That you are now clapping and laughing and say, God, yes, God, do it. Ah. Leave that person. Let's, deal. Let's start with this notorious boy. You think you, I, I, I'm doing this thing because I love it? 
because of the nature of the heart of God. The Bible says it is not the will of God that any man should perish but that all shall come to eternal life. All shall come to salvation. It's not the will of God that you yourself as an enemy of somebody else should perish. So if God is judging you, it is not his joy, he's not doing it joyfully. Who is that person that is happy beating the child and is happy beating the child? Who is that person? Is it that you are happy that the child is stubborn so that you can beat him? Does it do you any beautiful service by beating a child? So let not another, the senior one say, Yeah, mommy, beat his buttocks. Mommy, beat his buttocks. Mommy, look at his ear. Beat the ear. Then you will turn to him and say, Hey, come here, come here. <laughs> you mean you will be teaching me how to do this thing? You are wicked. That is how the Lord is saying. Is saying your enemy god is even judging your enemy don't rejoice don't be glad he is not doing it well joyfully god judged absalom his judgment was unto death david will say hi absalom i wish it were i that died you're a young man what, what brought you to this type of life? So learn this heart. Pray for it. Pray for this spirit. This is Christianity. Pray for this spirit. Let brotherly love continue. That is why the Lord says, if your enemy hungers, give him to drink. If he tastes, give him to drink. Have a free heart, a loving heart, even for your enemies. Otherwise, you cannot live it holy Christian life. You cannot live a true Christian life. You cannot live a complete Christian life. You cannot be holy for heaven. For without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Yes. Yes. Challenges against love are many. He's my enemy. It's a challenge. But see how David treated his enemy. He is an ungodly man. Yes. He is an, an ungodly man. Look at it in the book of John chapter 2. John chapter 2 in verse 23 to 25. John chapter 2, verse 23 to 25. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name. When they saw the miracles 
which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man. See it here. Jesus did miracles for man, for people. He turned water into wine. They drank and were happy with him. And many, many say, oh, we believe in Jesus. Many say so. Many rushed to him. Many applauded him. We believe in Jesus. I believe. But because he knew man, the ungodliness that is in man, the wickedness that is in man, the hypocrisy that is in man, he did not commit himself unto man. That is wisdom. That is caution. But that does not stop love for man. General love. Love is general. But for sinners and for the saints. The Bible says, Oh, no man anything but to love one another. Sinners, saints, hypocrites, ungodly, you owe them love. Jesus would love these people. Jesus would show them he loves them. Because they are objects of love. But Jesus will be wise. Jesus will be cautious according to the spirit of righteous wisdom. According to the spirit of righteous caution. Not fear and timidity. The person is ungodly, yes. But that does not stop you from loving. <laughs> when Emmanuel Bulus, I said, leave this place because of your immoral life and evil. As we detected it, it was terrible. He was to pack his property and go. Yes, he packed. But how is he going to eat? Before he finds another thing doing, what will he eat? How will he live? I must provide money for him. I must provide money. As he, he judgment which was meted, love follows. Because I wouldn't want him to go and be destroyed on the way. I wouldn't want him to lose himself and become a confused fellow where he is going. Have some money with you that can keep you for quite some time to settle. Let brotherly love continue. Later, I was told he farmed in our land, in church land, and wanted to sell it. Since he won't come here, I say it's true. He needs money. Let the church buy it. Whatever is the thing that is there. Evaluate it. Buy it. And let the church send the money to him. It will help him where he is. That may not change him. It didn't change him. His wickedness continued. But the love I showed was for myself. So that there is no 
anger in my heart, no darkness in my heart to dampen my life, my Christian life. Dampen my life. Late brotherly love. Whatever is the challenge, it is for your advantage, for your righteousness, for your peace, for your pure conscience. For your pure conscience. Oh, this person has offended. He must leave this place. If he leaves this place, how will he live over there? Should he be abandoned? How should he live over there? Before, if you transplant a crop and you do so in dry season, let's say so, or when the rain is not regular you must water it otherwise it will go and die water it enough that it can release roots by itself to now get sap by itself from the earth so that it doesn't die because remember you transplanted it you have removed it from where it thrives well. It had become accustomed to that place, has sent out root. But now you broke up all those roots and you're taking it to form another place. I mean, to live in another place, to become adapted to another place. And it takes time. What do you do? Let love continue, even on the enemy, for yourself. Then in this condition, you will be frowning your face on people. You will be running away from people. You will be keeping, your, keeping the people away from yourself. So, that is what we need. Of course, suspicion is there. I'm talking about challenges to law suspicion you can suspect somebody i suspect yes but with all the suspicion there is the reserve even when you see that foil has finished as you read it in the meter in the car there is a reserve that should take you to the next place to the next filling station for, for refoiling. That's what the, the manufacturer of vehicles have done. There, there is a reserve. You will see your foil finish, but there is a reserve for another 15 minutes drive. So love is the reserve that you treat your enemies with despite the sin of that person that requires judgment reserve this reservation of love is there don't don't it's risky not to use the reservation of love for the person you call your enemy to the point you don't give him to eat again you don't give him to drink again. It's very risky for your spiritual life. It's like somebody who said, I have entered my reserve. A driver, I have entered the reserve. Then this car can stop at any time. You are driving off. This car can abandon you at any time. That is it. Laid brotherly love continue you suspect somebody still give the general love caution is there wisdom is there but love must also be there love must also be there yes common sentiment because everybody else sees this person so 
your friend sees that person so and treats him this way your family members sees that person this way and treats him the other way this other this way to for themselves no 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 they won't come to him or even you are you say you are in the church ah the church is careful the church knows that this person is a wizard oh. this person is a thief don't carry him to your house this person is like that yes the church are treating that person that way or you find in the office that is how they treat that person that way how are you to treat the person how let brotherly love continue Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10 the Bible tells us from verse 30 to verse 36 or rather to 37 and Jesus answering said a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead now see the common treatment that followed and by chance there came down a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed by on the other side and likewise a Levite, when he was at the place came and looked on him and passed by on the other side common treatment common treatment what will you what will be your own treatment the way you have watched others do but a certain samaritan the bible says as he journeyed came where he was and when he saw him he had compassion on him different treatment these ones don't have this reserve who told them whether he was a fellow thief with these other people what thought are they carrying he didn't carry that same thought what thought that they saw him and ran away they saw him and took the other side they had a thousand and one evil incorrect thoughts all because there's no reserve of love in their heart no resolve <laughs> you know I'm saying the challenge is heavy in the society because if somebody now had accident somebody has accident rather and you are to come and help the person the corrupt thought of the society will come into you if you help this man the police will pick you if you help this man the police will pick you and the bible says do to others as you will want them to do to you now the thought of your self-protection self-defense has come will you do this thing will you save this man will you carry this man to hospital ah if the matter reaches police then police are demons you cannot do righteousness in the presence of demons you can't do righteousness in, in the presence of evil men let brotherly love continue this man went against that evil thought 
He did contrary. Verse 34. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him, as you will want others to do to you. This goes into the man's file before God for record. They must pay back this man what he has done in same ways, similar ways, whatever. It must be for the good of this man. It must be for the good of this man. What he has done. Creator who made the world pressed this man. These are the kinds of people I desire in my creation. You will not want to be in the creation of God in the way he wants because of policemen. You are following common people who don't have the love of God. You are family members. You are following the rule of society because they avoid that man. They avoid that woman. So, he cared for him. That is what the Lord is saying. And if sometimes all this suspicion may not be correct. All these things they say about the individual. This one is a wizard. This one is a witch. This is immoral. This is a thief. May not be so. Then, they are suffering already from one thing. You are adding the second thing to them. By running away. By depriving them of natural common law. Why? Why? Do you deprive them of natural common law love by just suspicion now we have proved that even if these things are correct on them they are still entitled to love even if these things observed of them said of them are correct on them they are still entitled to love That's what I'm saying. I've shown to you in scripture. Love is indication of your Christianity. Because a clock, as I have won before me now, must walk. Otherwise, what makes it a clock? It is supposed to show time and show correct time. Otherwise, what makes it to a, a, a clock? A microphone should amplify my, my voice. Otherwise, what makes it a microphone? A Christian should be a lover. Otherwise, how is he a Christian? How are you a Christian when you are not a lover? How are you a Christian when you are avoiding persons, people? How are you a Christian when you are frowning face with everybody? <laughs> One of our brothers said when he was an unbeliever, because he had relations that were witches and wizards, there was this general talk or there is this general talk in the society that make your blood hot for them in the night they will not be able to catch you so how do you do it in the night talk roughly I mean, in the day if you are talking to them talk roughly talk roughly deal roughly to them they will hear they will fear you in the night so this is what he was doing with his uncle <laughs> 
so that they should fear him in the night. Is that the word of God? Even cows that are rough with people, don't they kill it? Tie a cow and say you want to kill a cow. Is it, is it easy? The cow is ready for fight. They come, let me see, it's turning everywhere. But man still knows how to handle that cow. They must kill it. Is it you that which is a wizard will not handle because you are rough in the, in the daytime with them? Don't deceive yourself. It is gentleness of Christ. It is the love of God that is protection. It is the sincerity of God. Who is it that will hurt you when you are a follower of that which is good? The prince of this world coming, but he findeth nothing in me. He findeth nothing. The, when he spoke these things, they would have laid hands on him, but they found no occasion. They found no occasion. And they are, they must, the society must justify their arresting him. What reason do you advance to arrest him? They even sent people to arrest Jesus. Those people came back. Have you brought him? He said, no. <laughs> In fact, you say we should bring him because he's a madman. That is, never a madman spoke like that man. It's righteousness. Right doing. That is your protection. Against the devil. Against evil. Against evil men. It is the indication that you are a Christian. Look at it in 1 John chapter 4. From verse 7 to 12. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth God is born of God and knoweth God. Evidence of the Christian life. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. That is the evidence that you are a Christian. That you have become a Christian. But to still have this bile, this bitter thing attached to you, you say you're a Christian. Avoiding people. Frowning at people. Because you now they are evil people. Yes, I know the Bible says that a hard face sendeth away a backbiter. Somebody is coming to backbite to you. And he comes. Hey, hey, how are you? So fine, it's, fine, it's okay. Eh? What has happened? No, 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 no. He will go his own way. Yes. That is to protect from evil. It's a, it's a medicine to keep backbiters away. But not to deprive people of love. Because of sins in their lives, suspicion in your heart, you deprive them of love. Then, where is the Christianity? Where is the testimony of born again? You are bringing these witches and wizards thing in your village to Christianity? That's why. Do they live Christian life in the village? Have you seen them? Who, who follow those rules? Live Christian lives? Why are you bringing them to enlightened Christian community where the truth dwells? That is not the, the means of salvation, of protection, of deliverance for yourself. It is not. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Finish. You that are depriving people of love, you don't know him. He that hated his brother is in darkness and does not know that he is in darkness because the darkness has blinded his eyes. 
I'm telling you. Darkness has blinded your eyes. You're in darkness. And you're not aware that you're in darkness. Because that darkness you are in, hatred, has blinded your eyes. You are not in Christ. You are not. Satan has used his subtlety. <laughs> in Second Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians. Chapter 11. Verse 1. Oh, let me just read verse 3. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Serpent and his subtlety. Serpent and his subtlety the devil and his wisdom of removing righteousness from you from people unaware even to you that you're not a christian he has neatly removed righteousness as a pickpocket man how the hand entered into your pocket you're not aware but the money is no more there it's gone I fear. I fear that this Christian life, you might be doing it with self wisdom, self protective wisdom, not the wisdom of God. And as a result, by the subtlety of Satan, you are neatly, cunningly, shrewdly avoiding some people and have vowed in your heart you will have nothing to do with them even the reserve love cancelled you have it has even affected your face subtlety the devil subtlety go back to first john chapter 4 Verse 8. He that loveth not does not know God. In this was manifested the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world. That we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God. But that he loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved. If God so loved us. We ought to also to love one another for God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us his love came on us even as sinners then you are running away from these people because they are sinners you are depriving them of love because they are sinners how can you now fulfill the scripture beloved if God so loved us we ought also to love one another even when they are sinners I've told you the wisdom of love that does not mean you must not exercise godly wisdom as Jesus did I've told you about the caution in love Jesus was cautious because he knows men he was careful with men but he loved them Nobody was lacking in love towards Jesus. Nobody lacked, the, was deprived of love by Jesus. At least in the reservation. To live enough for you to repent and enter into real uh, fullness in, his, in Christ. Than to turn you off, run away. That is different from his communicating sinners. Who are doing practical wickedness and affecting eternal life of people. But even in this communication, you don't use stick. Bah! You are evil. Leave this place. 
Do you use stick? Or you use stone? Everybody stone her. Let her leave this place. Stone. Bah, bah. <laughs> Is that how you do it? In law. We were sending somebody away because of this witchcraft. I don't know witchcraft. It is a lot. I said, tell God that, that. Tell God everything that is. You feel what? Tell God. But our finding shows this. If it is there anything contrary, go and tell God. He will hear you. But as for us, this is the fact we have found out. Well, it's not that we hate you. It's that some people have been affected. You can't be here. Like the girl, the small girl that will come and be holding people's children. Holding, and it's, it, all it's, it, things have been shown clearly in her life. In, she's in witchcraft. She will be carrying people. Well, women are quickly avo avoiding their children from her. We have sent her away. Don't come here again. During conference, she will be in the kitchen. Who are you? Where, are you, where did you come from? When were you here? You are now a problem to the church. Women are keeping, keeping their children from you. The general food, you want to be there. And you're rough there. Leave this place. Don't come here again. But while we are doing that, hatred is not in the heart. We're just protecting the church. Caution. We're keeping people away from being initiated in the church. Wisdom. But love, can she meet me on the way and greet me? Pastor, good afternoon. I say, look at this witch, You're greeting who? Can I do like that? Never. We will greet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We will greet. And if she's in a serious need, I will give. That is life. Let brotherly love continue. Yes. Love is what we have received from God. Is what we constantly receive from God. Even sinners. And so it is what we must give to others. Christ has given us an example to follow his steps. Now, come to the fear you are having in your heart. Because the whole thing is self that is causing this trouble. Romans chapter 12. I read verse 21. Romans chapter 12. Verse 21. I mean, sorry. Verse 20 to 21. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he tears, give him to drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Everybody read verse 21. Romans chapter, chapter 12, verse 21. 1 to go be not overcome of evil at these evils hey, the society is polluted people are liars people are evil life hey, witchcraft hey, hey. don't assure, allow that to overcome your Christian life don't allow that to overcome your holy life don't allow them to overcome your relationship with God don't allow them to overcome your love. Don't allow that evil, evil environment. You are staying with your neighbor. One of the women there is terrible. The way she is doing, hey, my child, hey, my children. Yes, of course, caution, but don't allow her character to overcome your righteous life. To defile you. You are paying her back, either openly or secretly in your heart. A backslider in the heart. Don't allow that. Maintain your good works. Maintain your good thoughts. Maintain your good words. 
maintain your good service. Rebuking somebody is good if it is, is required to help the person, but not in anger. Not in anger. When I say not in anger, not in wicked anger, sinful anger, retaliative anger. Because of course you can be provoked that evil has been done, but the provocation does not last. Neither does it lead you to give Satan a place. So that's the word of God. Yes, for your protection, you are protected from evil. Once you show love, evil will not come in to take over your life. Evil will not come in to take over your life. Your love protects him from coming in. Because it's evil that is coming. But he comes in you. All around you is good. All around you is good. Love is the way to protect yourself from being overcome of evil. Love in your heart does not allow evil to convert you. It doesn't allow evil to convert you. Because evil is coming. Evil is coming to cause, to provoke you to run after evil. Do also to her as she's doing to you. You have become an evil man. Do also to him as he's doing to you. You have become an evil man. You have become as an evil woman. But he said, no. No. I would do her good. What a protection. You have, you have disallowed evil to enter into you. Love in your heart will make you remain pure, righteous. That heart will be pure. Love in your heart. In your environment, you will not be affected. And that is what I enjoy. That is what I enjoy. And peace will follow. Love in your heart will keep you peaceful. Because you have maintained your righteousness. And righteousness must go with peace. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Because you refuse to hate you keep your heart in righteousness in peace i mean purity peace follows and the peace of god which passes all understanding shall keep your heart love in your heart will keep your tongue from speaking evil because this thing you are saying this man this man what if it's not like that are you a righteous man? You feel, what if I'm speaking things that are not true? Ah, God, I'm sorry. Because this thing might not be true. It keeps your tongue from speaking evil. Love in your heart, in your life, will, remain, will make you remain holy. Romans chapter 13 verse 8 to 10. Oh no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Make you righteous. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment. It is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love walketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love in your heart will not allow you to do evil to your neighbor. Love is the summary of the law of scripture. If your heart is in love, 
you are at it scripture you are at scripture your enemies will not win over you never who is he that will hurt you if you are followers of that which is good the prince of this world cometh, but he findeth nothing in me the people look all around all around all around all around daniel and they found no evil for him for them to lay hold on him they said we cannot find evil on this man so it delayed the wickedness that they would have done on daniel's life because of this life of love he loved every one of them when they say okay we will find it by to make him break the covenant of love love for god will be broken will break it they were not able to break it but when they still formulated something did he walk on daniel his love for the king sincerity made the king never to sleep until he delivered daniel so the protection is there oh but you know eating food in people in brother's house listen to what the bible says in second in first timothy chapter four. First timothy chapter four i read verse four and five for every creature of god is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of god and prayer where you must eat for love you pray god your your word says every food is sanctified by prayer by the word of god and i'm here to love my brother to love my sister to refuse to eat will cause suspicion and will cause this love to be imperfect oh lord sanctify this food because i suspect this woman i suspect this man but for love's sake and in the circumstance i must eat for your glory sanctify god has promised he would do it if it were not that god is doing this thing many would have died only give more attention serious attention in prayer praying for food praying over food make sure you pray well over food and in wisdom pray in your heart pray in your mouth pray whatever and stand him firm nothing will happen to you in life nothing otherwise how will you do programs from moving from place to place and every kind of people cook food for you how will we eat in, in a conference when every kind of person wants to go to kitchen that prayer brother let's pray over food has there is a miracle prayer miracle that is done on that prayer in a righteous community but among sinners we don't know what to say in a righteous community by a servant of god by a child of god that prayer does a lot as simple as it is an amen in, with faith in christ everything is gone everything dies so that you can be original so the love should really be shown to people who told you that the food is poisoned who told you that the food is poisoned many times it's the fiery darts of the wicked that fires into your mind hey your own is gone you don't know this woman you have never heard hey. rebuke the devil 
Wherefore, taking the shield of faith, where will ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked? I shall take in poison and it shall not hurt me. That is the end. That is a chanting in Christ that carries almighty power against everything called poison. Otherwise, how do you live? How, could, how would the church have lived up to this time? How would men of God have lived? Then how would there be evangelism? Then how would we spread the true gospel, the pure gospel, undefiled, if there are all this suspicion and cunning wisdom, fleshly wisdom, to avoid one another because of self-protection? Beloved, let us love one another. In this way, you will not miss heaven. You will go there. You have overcome. May God give victory to your life. May God vic give victory to the church. Love one another. I will love. I will love. I will love, I will love, I will love, I will love, I will love Jesus people, I will love everybody, Jesus said I should love everyone, everybody sing, I will love. I say you should love, keep on loving, because you are in Christ. I will love Jesus people, I will love everybody. Jesus said I should love everyone. Sing again once, you should love. I say you should love, keep on loving forever. With the love of God in me. I will love as God loves with the love of God in me. I will love as God loves with the love of God in me. I will love as God loves. He said I should love my brother. So I will love my brother. I will love my sister. I will love and never fail. So I will love my brother. I will love my sister. I will love and never fail with the love of God in me. I will love as God loves. Sing it with the love of God in me. Yes, you will love as God loves. With the love of God in you. You will love as God loves. God. He said you should love your neighbor. You should love my neighbor. Oh yeah. So I will love my brother. I will love my sister. I will love and never fail. So I will love my brother. I will love my sister. I will love and never fail with the love of God in me. I will love as God loves with the love of God in me. I will love as God loves. Amen. With the love of God in me. I will love as God loves. He said, I should love my neighbor. Amen. Yes. 
my sister. I will love and never I will never fail. Love and keep on loving. Love keep on loving. I will love and never fail. Tell God to help you that you will really love. The devil subtly wants to remove real Christianity from your life by bringing fear fear into you making you imperfect in Christianity promise the God you will love but ask him to help you ask him to direct you the Lord will show you the path to follow if you say do this do it don't do this follow him that wisdom that is from God is perfect that's caution that's wisdom Jesus knows what is in me Jesus knows what is in me he knows when to do when not to do because of wisdom and caution but there's general love for people have a general love in your heart for people even the evil man thank you that's self-protective it cleanses you from all sin it makes you overcome intrusion of sin into your life thank you father grateful The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials for other spiritual materials messages or inquiries contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805 6834323 you can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe i
You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Jesus, I believe.